Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we are going to study transforms of some useful function. First function is unit rectangular function. So this is a mathematical definition of unit rectangular function and you are, we are using the factorial notation. So the unit rectangular function is equal to 1 when the absolute value of x is less than 1 by 2. This means that this is going to equal to 1 for the range minus 1 by 2 to 1 by 2 for the values of x. And it is equal to 1 by 2 for x is equal to 1 by 2. Now this is an ideal unit rectangular function but actually this unit rectangular function is equal to 1 by 2 when x is equal to 1 by 2. So this is something like this. And it is equal to 0 for x greater than 1 by 2. So on, on both these left side and right side we are going to have a uh, unit rectangular function amplitude is going to be equal to 0. So this is my function and this is the unit rectangular function. Note that in the denominator we have 1 over here. The denominator actually represents the weight of the pulse. For example, if I have this function whose weight is from minus tau pi 2 to the tau pi 2, then in this case the unit rectangular function is going to be. So in the denominator we have the weight of the pulse. The weight of the pulse in this case is tau. Similarly, if the weight of the pulse is 2 tau, then the unit rectangular function is going to be represented as x divided by 2 tau. So the denominator indicates the weight of the pulse. Next function is the sinc function. Sinc function is actually sine our argument. The so sinc function is basically, I will write over here, sinc of x is basically sine of x divided by x. So this function is actually sine our argument and if you plot this function we are going to have this graph. So this is the graph of the sinc function. Now there are few important properties of this function that we can see from the graph. The first property is that sinc function is an even function. You can look at the symmetry that this sinc function is symmetrical about the y axis. So this means that this sinc function is an even function. Now other property is that because we have sinc of x is equal to sine of x divided by x. So this sinc of x is going to be 0 when sine of x is going to be 0. So sinc of x is equal to 0 when sine x is equal to 0. And we know that when sine x is equal to 0. But there is one exception there and that exception is that x is equal to 0. So I am going to write except at x is equal to 0. Because at x is equal to 0, this sin x is going to be then sin x by x is going to be undefined. So sin of x is going to be 0 when sin of x is equal to 0. And we know that when sin of x is equal to 0. Sin of x is equal to 0 for the integer multiples of n pi. So that is why sin of x is also going to be 0 for the integer multiples of n pi. And you can see from the graph. You can see from the graph we have zero crossings at the plus minus n pi. We have zero crossing at pi, at 2 pi, at 3 pi, 4 pi. Similarly, we have zero crossings at minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi, minus 4 pi. So the sign uh, sinc of x is equal to zero when sine of x is equal to zero. And that, that sine of x is equal to zero when we have x is equal to plus minus n pi. And that had me shown over here that we have zero crossings at pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi and so on. Similarly for negative values minus pi, minus 2 pi, minus 3 pi, minus 4 pi. Now what about x is equal to zero? For x is equal to zero we have to use the L Hopital rule. Now what is this L Hopital rule? We know that for the L Hopital rule, for example when I am finding the sinc of zero, for the L Hopital rule what I do that because sinc of x is equal to sine of x divided by x in L Hopital rule we take the derivative of the numerator as well as the denominator. The derivative of the numerator we know that it's cosine of x and the derivative of the denominator is 1. Now we are going to find the sinc of 0 we are going to put 0 in place of x so this will be cos cosine of 0 divided by 1 so cosine of 0 is 1 so this will be 1 by 1 is equal to 1. So the sinc of 0 is equal to 1 so I am going to write over here that in case of the sinc function, sinc of 0 is equal to also 1. So at x is equal to 0, we are going to have sinc of 0 is equal to 1. So this is my third property. The fourth is that because this uh, sinc function is a combination of two functions, if you can have a log, this sinc function is a combination of two functions. I am going to write it again over here. 
because we have think of x is equal to sine x divided by x so this is actually a combination of sine of x and 1 by x so this is actually the combination of two functions and we know that sine of x is an oscillating function whose period is 2 pi so this is my oscillating function or oscillating signal whose period is 2 pi and 1 by x is a decreasing function whose amplitude decreases continuously so this is my decreasing function whose amplitude decreases continuously as 1 by x so in general we are going to have conclusion in the fifth point so in general we can say that think x is an even oscillating function with decreasing amplitude it has a unit peak at x is equal to 0 because at x is equal to 0 we have 1 hour here so this is actually 1 this is not 1 by x this is 1 so the sync function is an even oscillating function let me write over here sync function is an even oscillating function even oscillating function with decreasing amplitude with decreasing amplitude the amplitude decreases because of this second function 1 by x and the peak value of the sync function is at sine sync of 0 peak value is at sync of 0 here the, the value is 1 we have already defined using the derived this using the L hospital rule so sync of 0 is equal to 1 and this is my even oscillating function because it is symmetrical about the y axis and it has decreasing amplitude and the zero crossings are at integer multiples of pi now what we have some other argument of sync of x for example if we have sync of 3 omega by 7 what we need to do is to equate this argument to pi or n pi the so 3 omega by 7 is equal to plus minus n pi it means that 3 omega is equal to plus minus 7 n pi so omega is equal to plus minus 7 n pi divided by 3 so the zero crossing will be at omega 7 pi divided by 3 and then 14 pi divided by 3 and then 21 pi divided by 3 and also for the negative values so I'm going to put plus minus over here plus minus and plus minus over here so this sink of 3 omega by 7 is will have zero crossing at these values now we are going to do example 3.2 which is define the Fourier transform of this rectangular function with the pulse width of tau so this is the uh, graphical representation of this function so let us find the Fourier transform and we know the formula for the Fourier transform is g e of omega integration of minus infinity to positive infinity the function g of t multiplied by e power minus j omega t dt now in this case our integration will be from minus tau by tau by 2 to positive tau by 2 so we are going to write g of omega and the amplitude of g of t is equal to 1 so I am going to replace 1 over here and I am going to replace integration with minus tau by 2 to tau by 2 and this will be e power minus j omega t dt and now I am going to use the formula for the uh, integration so this integration will be equal to 1 divided by minus j omega and again e power minus j omega t and the limits of the integration are again from the minus tau ta by 2 to tau by 2 let me multiply minus with this so we are going to have first of all let me put the uh, limits of the integration so this will be e power minus j omega ta by 2 minus into e power plus j omega ta by 2 now let me multiply minus to this and we are going to get e we are going to get g of omega is equal to 1 by j omega and this will be e power j omega ta by 2 minus e power minus j omega ta by 2 so i can write this at as is equal to 1 by omega and then i can place omega in the denominator over here place j in the denominator over here now this is equal to 2 sine omega tau divided by 2 so in place of this I am going to write 
this is equal to 1 by omega and this is going to be 2 sin of omega tau divided by 2. Now let me multiply and divide by omega pi divided by omega tau divided by 2. So we are going to have 1 by omega multiplied by this omega tau divided by 2 and then we are going to have 2 sin of omega tau divided by 2 divided by omega tau divided by 2 and this is my sink function. So this w is going to be cancelled with this w and this 2 is going to be cancelled with this 2. So this will be tau into and this is my sink function so this will be sink of omega tau divided by 2 and this is my g of omega. So the Fourier transform of the rectangular function is equal to tau sink of omega tau divided by 2. So we are going to write over here that the Fourier transform the Fourier transform of this rectangular function t by tau is equal to tau sink of omega tau divided by 2. So whatever is in the denominator will be written over here and whatever is in the denominator will be multiplied by omega in the argument and divided by 2. So this is the general Fourier transform of this rectangular function. Now to find the zero crossing we need to equate this, this argument to n pi. So we are going to have omega tau divided by 2 is equal to plus minus n pi. Which means that we are going to have omega tau is equal to plus minus 2 n pi which means that omega is going to be equal to plus minus 2 and pi divided by ta. So if we can have a look here for n is equal to 1 and so on we are going to have omega is equal to plus minus 2 pi by ta and then 4 pi by ta plus minus 4 pi by ta and plus minus 6 pi divided by ta and so on. So these are my zero crossings and this is the plot of this sink function. The amplitude is the ta, we have shown the amplitude of ta and the zero crossings are the 2 pi plus minus 2 and pi divided by ta. So we have a zero crossing over here which is 2 pi divided by ta and 4 pi divided by ta and 6 pi divided by ta and so on. Similarly for the negative values we have zero crossing at minus pi divided by ta minus 4 pi divided by ta minus 6 pi divided by ta and so on. So this is the Fourier transform of the rectangular function. Thank you.